Hey there, folks. So, what I have here today is yet another new backlight kit. Uh, this is the newest iteration of the uh, quote-unquote drop-in kit uh, from Cloud Game Store here. Um, real quick, it looks like they've added a, a few new features to more or less the same kit they put out last time. Uh, on the surface, it looks like they have a brand new screen. Um, I'm sorry. It looks like they have the exact same screen uh, with a brand new converter board. Uh, this screen is more or less uh, the same as the previous iteration of this kit. Uh, one of the major differences is that they've tweaked the color profile of this screen. Um, so the uh, newly manufactured ones, mine at least, I'm assuming they all come with that blue tab there, but the uh, date code on the back of mine indicates that it was made August of 2020, which seems like an awful long time ago for something that's supposed to be new, but it is what it is. Um, and then the kit itself uses more or less a brand new converter board here. Uh, so the previous iteration of this kit I installed in this Game Boy a little while back. I'll have the video linked in the description. Um, uses a little bit of a different setup here. So this new kit comes with the converter board, a spacer, well, three spacers, uh, one black foam spacer, and then two hard acrylic clear spacers here, and some adhesive to attach the screen itself into the Game Boy. Uh, the previous iteration of this kit notice did not have a wire on the um, the the ribbon connectors uh, this one does this one requires soldering it requires some external power it can't just pull everything it needs off of the LCD data bus yeah like the uh, old version uh, so the manufacturer does actually say it is drop in and they say you know just strip the wire down get a bunch of um, metal and wrapped around the battery terminal. That's such a bad practice. It's actually hilarious. Uh, these kits are not drop-in in the strictest sense of the word, but they are designed to be installed within an OEM shell. And um, I did actually do an install of one of these things in this Game Boy, and I'll I'll have that I'll have it at the very least. I'll link it in the description. I don't know if that video is ever going to go. Uh, public otherwise uh, but in this in the install I did in the video I did for this console you can see I installed it in an OEM shell got an OEM plastic lens on there even um, no cut you can see the process for that in this video I did do a little bit of cutting if I recall correctly um, this is the previous iteration of the kit and uh, I'll have that link below as well. It's it's pretty easy either way. If you're using an OEM shell, I recommend cutting, but they do make IPS ready shells out there, uh, but it is worth keeping in mind that if you're buying a flat, funny playing shell, good Lord, I can't speak today. If you're buying a funny playing shell, it is designed for a funny playing backlight kit, not this backlight kit. It'll work, but not quite the same thing. So we put that in there, you notice there's a lot of wiggle room for this thing. Um, I don't know precisely where it is supposed to go. It will work, but you're going to have a uh, difficult time getting the LCD secured. Um, you might notice that there is a strong lack of uh, material where the where the adhesive would be able to latch onto the shell and actually grab the screen. So it can be made to work, but these things are really designed for OEM shells. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and get this install underway and uh, let's take a look. I'm just gonna stack everything off to the side and get my Game Boy stripped down here. In the interest of uh, slightly expediting making the video a little bit faster. I've already started taking apart the Game Boy, but uh, it's probably not going to help too significantly. Tonight's donor is this wonderful, brand new, like new condition, um, 
Midnight Blue Game Boy Advance with a uh, broken battery cover latch. For once, it's not the battery cover itself that's broken, it's the shell, but anyway, it does work. Screen's a little bit worse for wear, but console itself is fine. So this is what we shall use. I don't recommend these batteries, by the way, it's just what I had. I don't even know if they still sell them anymore. Last I checked, they didn't. Anyway, seven screws and that'll pop off. And we'll set this aside. We will need this again to test the kit uh, because I am going to be gathering some um, power usage data. I'm not going to be using this, but if you're a home gamer, it is still very handy to test the new kit because you can just drop the back of the motherboard in there and then reinstall your batteries and then boot up the console that way. Um, so you can make sure that the kit actually works before going through all the effort to install it. But, uh, might as well str oh wait, I gotta get some power usage m numbers. I literally just mentioned that and totally got sidetracked. So I am going to be using my uh, MDP XP power supply here. And this is not necessary for testing kits. I'm only using it because I want to gather some uh, numbers so we can compare before and after and see how much, so we can extrapolate how much battery life we can expect with one of these kits. Let me grab my game here. And I'm just going to test with the exact same game I always test with, my original copy of Pokemon Emerald. And we need some power. And the Game Boy works like normal as expected. All right, so in the overworld, in the exact same place I'm always testing at, the exact same game, at 2.4 volts, this Game Boy is pulling anywhere from 118 to 120 milliamps, which is a hair on the side of high, but still pretty typical. Um, so nothing so much that I think something's wrong, but it is a little bit higher than I've seen other consoles. Either way, we will unplug that, and actually, I suppose we can continue taking it apart. Two more JIS screws. These are not Phillips, like so commonly assumed. That comes out there. I'm just making sure I'm not losing any membranes or anything. Uh, just pull this aside for a bit. Do need to do a little bit of soldering to test this kit out. So in this particular case, that is the wrong connector. I'm surprised they did that. The uh, actual ribbon you should be using for the 40-pin GBA has the solder point on the side of the GBA side. Pins go up, not down, and I'm actually going to use this one that I have sitting on my desk. The solder point is in a somewhat inconvenient Place because it's exactly where you need to put your finger to close the bail, but it's easy enough to work around. The reason I am using this ribbon cable instead of the one that came with my kit is because this one has a slightly shorter wire and um, I will be trimming the wire to install it. This wire needs to get soldered up so that it connects directly to battery voltage. 
The, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the OEM of this kit recommends just stripping a bunch of the wire and wrapping it around the positive battery terminal. That is extremely sloppy and probably going to give you problems. So what I'm going to do instead, move my batteries, so get that in frame a little bit better. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to solder it to the side of the fuse that the power switch is on so that we not only give it power straight from the batteries, but we also have the power fused just in case. Remember, fuses are safety devices. Bypassing them is uh, very silly. It's entirely possible that the kit itself is already fused, but why not play it safe? And we can uh, route that a little bit more carefully later, but that should be good enough for testing. Now, let's try out this end. I am going to connect the motherboard first. Uh, so on the Game Boy Advance side, this connector goes pins up, but on the adapter cable side, it goes pins down. You insert it and then push the back of the connector down, and then it's nice and solid and in there. I highly recommend attaching this board first because otherwise when you push this down and you apply pressure to this you can apply pressure to the screen itself and uh, damage it. That's actually how likely how I damaged one of my previous kits of these things. So these screens are a little bit more de delicate than they might appear. That is to say that this connector also requires a little bit more force than uh, you might assume. Uh, screen side goes in just like that. You can flip it closed. Easy peasy. Goes just like that. Drop the game in. And let's try it again on the power supply. Minus red to positive. Turn that on. And I'm gonna separate the screen out a little just to just to ensure that it's not short on anything. Like the uh, Game Boy Advance motherboard. Comes on, that's a good sign. All right, and so in the overworld, in the exact same place with the exact same game on the exact same Game Boy, uh, at 2.4 volts, this assembly is pulling anywhere from 308 milliamps to 265 milliamps. So it is quite the thirsty kit here. Uh, now, one of the new features with this kit, actually pretty nice, uh, compared to the old iteration, uh, this kit will actually recall settings, so if you have it set to a different brightness and then power cycle it, it'll still have that setting. So I just set it to the lowest brightness, and at 2.4 volts, it's pulling, what, 212 to 224 milliamps? So quite a bit less, but still kind of high. And then it should have eight levels of brightness. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that value I pulled earlier looks to have been for the maximum level of brightness. Though it has leveled off a little bit. What do we see, 277 to 298 now? Either way. Uh, we'll go more into this uh, once I've actually got this installed within the Game Boy itself, but there's also a uh, new pixel grid emulation feature where if you press and hold the touch sensor, it should enable that. Uh, I might be having a little bit of difficulty. There it is. Because it's right on that uh, link port. Giving me some extra hassle. And uh, then we've got the pixel grid mode. Now you might notice the screen is looking quite a bit dimmer. Uh, it is still on the maximum brightness. That's just one of the features of pixel grid emulation. Uh, but if we power this thing off. Give it a second. Power it back on. 
you'll notice it recalled my settings. I still have that pixel grid on and it's still set to the minimum brightness. So that's that's pretty neat. I think I think that's very neat. I think that is a, a, a welcome addition to this kit. Um, specifically the memory, so you don't have to keep resetting it every time you restart it. If you want to play with certain settings or you know, you like the pixel grid on, you want it to be on every time without having to toggle it. There you go. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of the pixel grid, but for those that want it, I guess it's certainly a nice feature to have. Um, anyway, before carrying on, I do want to check one quick thing. I'm going to get the uh, APS Ready shell. And I don't know what I'm expecting to find here, but I just want to show... Oops. What did I do? There we go. It will work there. You just you'll have to have to do some work to align the screen manually, but it'll work. Anyway, now that we know the screen works, I'm gonna switch that off. And let's carry on with the install. Like I said, I am going to continue to use the OEM shell, even though we could reshell it. I won't. And to detach this, I am going to pull the screen off first, or attempt to. There we go. And then pull that out, just like that. I want to get that separated just so I don't have anything to worry about while I'm manipulating this. All right, so now we need to pull out the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the buttons and such. That's not going anywhere. Oop, that's gone. Oh well, screen comes out pretty easily. I have had this thing apart. Um, I always say this when I get to this step in my videos, but it's always actually a good idea. And last time I was messing around with this Game Boy, I actually took advantage of that. But when you have it apart like this, now's the best opportunity to clean it if you're using the original shell. Uh, but I've already cleaned this one. I've actually, I've actually done that for once. Um, and so this screen is going to pop loose pretty easily. But the uh, method for pulling screens out is literally just take the shell twist and then the adhesive usually makes a big popping noise as the screen pops out you'll get a corner popping out like that and then I find can twist it slip the finger in there and then untwist it and then the screen pops itself out and pull it out make sure to bring that adhesive uh, this little sticky gasket you won't be reusing it I think you can if you want but I don't necessarily recommend that Especially when you've got a brand new one to use. Anywho, this is a 3 inch IPS kit, not a 3.2 inch IPS kit, which means you can continue to use your OEM lens if you want, or you can get a new one. Just keep in mind that the lens you want is OEM sized, not IPS, IPS sized. So for example, this one here is an IPS size lens. If we measure the width of the uh, actual screen area on this thing, we get a little over 64 millimeters. Whereas on a OEM sized lens, whoops, it's actually about 62 and a half millimeters. So you, you can use the oversized one. Just keep in mind that if you use an oversized one with an OEM shell, you will also have to trim back this plastic on the inside. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because I'm just going to use a uh, standard size lens. And let me mute that real quick. Mute keyboard. I don't have my keyboard shortcut set up yet. Anyway. Side, don't need any of those. Let's go on with the install here. Oh, there it is. So 
So I'm going to try walking through this both ways, but I'm actually going to do it the latter way. Um, so if you didn't want to modify your shell, you just wanted to drop this in as is, you can uh, take this black foam off and mount it on the left side right here. The purpose of this foam is to provide the LCD a platform to rest on, uh, similar to this side. Uh, because you notice on the side and along the bottom there are these little uh, ridges that the OEM LCD sits on. We don't need these, in fact they get in the way, so we want to remove them. And then we have our adhesive gasket that fits in there just like that. Easy peasy. Make sure to take the tape off. Whoops. Now oh, I got it stuck in there. And then the two little acrylic squares that I keep throwing everywhere just sit in the bottom, just like that. The uh, adhesive will hold them down if you use it. And then we just line the screen up with these spacers against that side of the shell, just like that. I'm gonna trim this thing because the last install I did with one of these screens, I did the um, no cut method and I found that Putting the LCD up on a ledge over here and over here meant that if you apply any pressure whatsoever to any part of the LCD, the whole thing will flex. And I managed to damage a kit that way. Um, at least I'm pretty sure I did. So we're going to trim. Trimming is very easy. We just need some flush cutters. And then we come in here and flush cut out. these little walls. Now if you have a Dremel or a uh, rotary tool and a tool stand, uh, you can get some like milling bits, I believe four millimeter end mills will fit. And that is usually what I'll use for a trim like this, but you can get away with flush cutters. Though in a clear shell, definitely advise going the rotary tool way. There we go. Now, unfortunately, if you look closely, you can see a little pattern on the front from my tool here. But just keep going along. It'll all come out nice and easy. I'm going to finish this up with the rotary tool just to make it nice and clean. I'll be right back. And ta-da! So I got cocky and accidentally uh, dropped... I crashed the tool in, but... um. <laughs> quick quick lap around the whole periphery and I got it evened out, so should be good to go. Anyway, uh, carrying on with the install, it is pretty much exactly the same as we left off. Uh, keep in mind that this adhesive thing is directional, uh, so if you are using it, make sure you have the correct side down. Um, and these are spaced, spaced for OEM shells, so... If you're trying to be creative and using it in an IPS shell, you're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to the orientation. But in an OEM shell, you have the thin side and the thick side. The thin side goes on the inside left, just like that. But we need to actually peel this off here. Uh, I'd recommend leaving the center of the adhesive in if you do not have the lens in there. If you do have the lens in there, you're gonna have a little bit of a harder time installing the adhesive. But just peel that off, just the periphery. You'd leave the uh, paper on the center. And then uh, 
drop that in there. I'm going to get it lined up with the top left corner. Top right, excuse me. I swear I know my left and my right. And then we drop it in there. Get all the edges down. And then if you left the paper in there, because it helps keep the uh, adhesive in order, this stuff is pretty thick so it wasn't too big of a deal, uh, but then you just pop it out. But I've already got it in there. Just quickly wipe off the inside here. Make sure that's pressed down. They say it's drop-in, but the install just feels so much more solid once you got that ridge trimmed out. And let's pull the paper off. Set the spacer. Right there. Other spacer. There. And then the uh, screen. Let me know it works. Well, that's not supposed to happen. I get lucky on that side. Okay. It's not strictly necessary to get the film off, except that there's a stamp right in the middle of the screen on the film. cable on the right and get the screen itself lined up in the shell with the bottom right corner should be nicely installed there. So we're good to go to finish the install. So I'm actually going to connect this up to the Game Boy Advance side first. Like I said, we don't want to put any more undue pressure on that LCD than we need to. Especially since I broke the last one. I normally like those, uh, if I'm using aftermarket buttons, I usually like those funny playing ones. But funny playing doesn't make this color, and I rather like this color. So we're going to try it out. I will throw a link in the description to the parts I'm using, if I remember. I'll try and remember. I'm usually pretty good at it. in there. You don't want to push down on the screen at all. So I'm going to lift that up so I can get my fingers under there, then flip it down. I'm going to bend that out in front of the ribbon and drop that in, just like that. So 
Is that my other? Yes. Excellent. for the rest of the parts and they're right in front of me. I'll use the OEM power switch. I always liked using the OEM power switch even with aftermarket buttons. I don't know, I just like the contrast. It feels more uh, appropriate, I guess. I don't know. That and these cheap buttons don't always get the mold right. This is an OEM shell, by the way. They call this Midnight Blue and they do make aftermarket reproductions this specific color but uh, it's not quite the same thing the uh, aftermarket ones are a little bit more purple than this thing is this is genuinely like an ambiguous purple bluish in person uh, looking at the preview on my phone it looks way more purple than it does in person but you'll have to take my word for that um, but yeah, I, I've had the aftermarket side by side and those are like noticeably purple, whereas this one is noticeably blue. But like, unless they're side by side, they do look the same color. All right, there we go. And if all goes well, ta-da! So I got the alignment slightly off, which is a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, looks like it's too far left and up, which is weird because it is supposed to go all the way to that side. Uh, but I guess I didn't get it far enough down on the, uh, on the spacers. But there you go. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Maybe swapping out the lens could help with that. Let's uh, put that back into the normal mode, per chance. All right. Now let's get some tests done. So just going to do a uh, quick once over, make sure I don't see any weird glitches or bugs and I don't, I didn't expect to. I didn't see any with the previous kit and I didn't even see any with the other kit that I messed up. So let's move straight into the synthetic tests and the purpose of the synthetic tests is if it passes all of those synthetic tests then it will... It'll play pretty much every game, no problem. Oop. My light is in the way. All right. I keep doing that. I should just tape that on. Uh, we want 240p, I believe. So it looks like it's in pixel grid mode. And just for reference, there are some uh, color bars. I know it uh, doesn't really do too much for context without something to compare it to, but there you go. Let's turn the uh, pixel grid off, mayhap. I 
touch sensor is more on the Nintendo logo itself. There we go. Here's what you want to see. So here is, you can see how I got my uh, alignment off. On the right and bottom, you can see that red pixel um, area on the outside. And on the top and left is not showing up because I got my alignment wrong. But just for comparison, here's another one that I did. Probably should have had it ready, don't you think? No, we don't care about that. Oh, that's not it either. I just put new firmware on here, so it doesn't have my history. If we go into the grid, you can see I got this one pretty, pretty well aligned. But there you go. All right, what we want to check is the shadow sprite. So what we're looking at here, and I'm gonna give the uh, same same long spiel I always give, so if you've already heard it before, well, you're gonna hear it again. Uh, so the original Game Boy console did not have a way of making objects on the screen transparent. Uh, however, the pixel response of the original screens was so bad that a lot of devs just decided to use that in their favor. So whenever they wanted a um, transparent object on the screen, what they would do is they would just flicker the sprite on and off real quick. So, uh, so the game is running at approximately 60 frames per second. It's just a hair less, but for the sake of the example, we'll call it exactly 60. So on the first frame, the sprite is on and normal. In frame two, the sprite is completely gone. And then in frame three, it's on as normal. Frame four, completely gone. All the way through 60 frames, every single second until that sprite is off the screen. Um, like I said, it results in a nice transparency, transparent um, effect on the screen. Uh, when I first pulled that sprite up, it was flickering pretty consistently and now it is not flickering nearly as much. In person, I can still see the flickering, but looking at my phone's preview, it looks pretty solid. Now, what we wanna see is, I'm getting ready to move it over to the other side of the screen. What we wanna see is that there's no weird artifacting left behind. Uh, and, spoiler alert, I think I already know what's gonna happen. But yeah, we move that over, and now I see flickering in both spots. Now, again, my phone preview is showing that pretty smooth. I don't know if it's going to pick up on the flickering. Uh, something, something, shutter, speed, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. But you get the point. There shouldn't be any objects there, artifacts, and there are. Uh, so, unfortunately, that is not that great. And you can see even backing out of the menu. Uh, maybe you can't see it. It's kind of hard to see. But if you look at his shirt you can see right on the bottom there right where my fingernail is it's a little bit different color where it's still flickering uh, so unfortunately these kits have some image retention uh, now it's not permanent it will go away just got to give it time uh, test what do we need test no I think I've already done all the testing that does pretty much everything so let's switch over to, ah, excuse me, got the hiccups. That looks like an easy flash, so that should be fine. Let's do the reset test, quickly double check that it is running the way it should. And it's just easier to run that straight in Game Boy Color mode instead of uh, trying to emulate that. But, same thing here, whenever this S in the word scrolling goes across the left hand side of the screen, it is issuing an LCD reset command. In some of the older kits I've tested out, um, that reset command would result in some pretty wicked frame tearing or frame dropping. Um, sometimes, you know, up to like a few hundred frames, which is a serious problem uh, because there are some games that will reset in the middle of a play. Um, 
you know, for the sake of expediency. And so what a screen reset is, is when the uh, Game Boy Advance is drawing lines on the screen, drawing pixels, it draws a frame like this. It will start at the top left and it will draw pixel by pixel, a whole line, and then it will go down pixel by pixel, whole line, all the way through the whole screen, all 160 rows, 240 columns. Uh, and uh, what a reset would do is if the screen is, say, here in its drawing process, instead of making its way all the way down and keep going, it just stops and starts over at the top. Uh, so an original screen didn't really care too much. Uh, these screen kits are a little bit more sensitive because they have a frame buffer. They have an FPGA or equivalent taking the screen data from the Game Boy CPU and then converting it into a format that this new screen is uh, happy with. Um, frame resets don't always uh, convert very well because the FPGA is expecting data for a full frame. In this case, it looks like they've sufficiently worked around that, uh, so it just discards the rest of that frame and then moves on to the next with no weird dropping or tearing that I can see. So that is that is a pass. <laughs> Let's reset that. And then we're going to go back into the menu here, and we're going to look at... Nope, that wasn't it. We're going to look at Zelda.gb. I clearly didn't do a very good job of cleaning the power switch. Anyway. Same thing. So if we uh, look at this test that I usually do, when we look at this guy's chain, that's that sh same shadow sprite that I usually, that I've always tested before. Um, and I can see, you know, going back and forth in uh, Link's Awakening here, I can see that we are getting some artifacting on the screen from that chain. Uh, because if we leave it alone long enough, leave it in one place for it to flicker, it'll, it'll set an artifact into the screen that is there even as I change scenes. So if you look where the chain is on the LCD itself, as it's scrolling, you can see a little bit of an artifact present throughout that whole process, which is not great. Uh, the other thing we're looking at in this scrolling is uh, these little wooden posts in this fence here. They contrast this green grass pretty nicely, and on some of the other kits, they do result in some artifacting when uh, s switching from green to brown. Uh, but we don't see that here, uh, so it's it's not as bad as some of the older kits, but it definitely has a problem with some of the flickering. Now, not a huge issue, again, uh, but let us, let me show you a worst case scenario, why that could be, does this have a list or just the straight last one? Oh, it's just the straight last one. Ah. Uh, I don't remember what the game's called. Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, I had to look it up. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but I've o always ever seen it called, pronounced, uh, just called Zass, Z-A-S, uh, but there is a whole name to this game. Uh, the reason I want to talk about this one in specific, and quite frankly, I should have been pulling it up for basically every backlight kit, but I just simply didn't know about it until now, um, this game has a transparent background. So if we go into the game and start it, you can see all that flickering. Actually, go figure, it looks fine on the screen, on uh, the phone preview that I see, but in person, you'll have to trust me when I say it, genuinely looks terrible. Nyon unplayable. Um, I don't know that any kits do this game very well. Not a huge deal, I think. Um, one game out of the few thousands or whatever there are. One game being broken isn't really that big of a deal, but especially since it's not a particularly good game. There you have it. I hope that demonstrated what I'm talking about a little bit better. Um, I'm hoping the phone picked it up. I'm not really seeing it. 
I see it in person, but I'm not seeing it on the phones. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to show off from here. Uh, so let us take a look at Pokemon Emerald again. Or not. That's what I get for playing with old games. I'll pop that out. Here. Because now we want to check out. I'm going to compare the two versions of this kit. So of course I don't have emerald in there. I test enough that I know exactly where it is anyhow. But what I want to do here, I'm booting up the same game on two different consoles because I want to show off the colors more directly. Uh, so these are both set to the exact same brightness and these are both iterations of this kit. Uh, the difference is this one has the old screen and this one has the new screen. You can see the colors are different. Um, not much, it's not significant, but it is there. If I get a third Game Boy, we'll take a look for comparison. This will be our... Um, control group here. This is a stock AGS 101 console with zero modifications other than the shell. Uh, but we have Pokemon Emerald. There it is. Oh, and of course I'm over here. You'd think I'd learn by now. Okay. So at the exact same angle, AGS-101, I'm actually going to tweak the angle so that it's actually visible because the viewing angles on this thing suck. Uh, you can see the colors are a little bit different still, uh, but they're a little bit closer on the, uh, oops, spoiler alert, this thing has the new kit in it too, it just has the old screen. But compared to the, uh, old screen, the new screen is a little bit more color accurate. At least for an AGS-101. That being said, I do... I think it's worth comparing a uh, one of the 9380 based kits here. Let me pull that up too. So this is a uh, slate, but it has a regular 9380 base screen in it. This one is not laminated. All the, this is obviously a conversation for a different video, but all the slates will be laminated. This particular one just isn't. Um, so I think it's still a fair comparison, but you can see the colors between the 9380 screen and the new and improved quote unquote drop-in screen are still quite a bit different. And, uh, you know, the, di the difference is smaller, because this is the old screen, and this one is the new screen, but there are still some pretty significant differences. But again, this is when I have a direct comparison. I have on my desk all of the iterations of the screen. I can tell that I still like the 9380 better. I like the color implementation better. I just think it looks better. Um, I like the viewing angles. I, I just... I like everything about that kit in comparison to this one. That's not to say this is a bad kit. This is actually a really fantastic kit. I'm really pleased with the progress they've made. 
but in a side-by-side -side comparison, you know, I, I still have my preferences. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm very pleased with it. Uh, this looks looks great. I especially like the. Uh, okay, I don't like the feature, but I like that. I like that we're getting kits with more features. I think feature creep in this case is excellent, and I am very glad to see it happening in uh, in these kits here. Um, and for those who are wondering, the old screen is compatible with the new kit and vice versa. Uh, some of the changes are with the adapter PCB itself, some of the changes are with the screen. If you want to mix and match, you can such that if you already have an existing install and want to get the new features without swapping out the screen, you absolutely can. And my screen is not glitching out, that's just the uh, pattern being picked up, kind of weird uh, video compression. I don't know, in, in person it looks fine. On the uh, preview it looks like it's uh, flashing and flickering, but it's totally fine. I like I like that it's an option. Personally, I'm going to keep it disabled because of how significantly affects the brightness, uh, but there's also a black and white color palette mode, which I personally have no idea what I'm going to use it for, but I guess it's neat to have. Uh, you can use that to override literally any game, including original Game Boy games, and we can have the black and white with the pixel grid. Um, personally, I think that is the worst of all the options. So I am going to turn both off, bring it back to the regular mode with the 2x integer scaling. Um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty darn good. And for installing in OEM console, like if you don't want to reshell your console, it ain't too bad. I now see that these two colors do not match whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I thought they were a little bit closer than that. I suppose I should have looked at that before continuing the install. Oh well, doesn't matter. Um, nah, it's, it's a good kit. I'm digging it. I will, uh, I'll update my spreadsheet with the power usage numbers. I don't remember what the 9380 based kits were or even the previous iteration of this kit. I don't remember what we're looking at as far as power usage, so I don't know how it compares offhand, but if you check my spreadsheet linked in the description, you can see that, you can see that below. Um, you can compare all the kits. And I have gotten some uh, some flack on this, uh, so I do want to explain it a little. My spreadsheet, I give units the way I give them for a very specific purpose. I don't tell you, oh, you should get 10 hours of battery life out of your console after installing this kit, because that will be true for literally no one. Uh, the reason being, every console is different, every game is different, every battery is different, uh, and, you know, if you're using it at a different screen brightness, then that's going to affect everything too. So what I do is I take a before measurement, and then I take an after measurement, and we can extrapolate that because before it was using 120 milliamps, and after it's using 300 milliamps, we can guesstimate that it's using approximately two and a half times as much battery life, which means if we used to get 20 hours, now we will probably get seven hours or so, give or take. Um, and, and that's, that's the whole point of that. The whole point is I give you the formula to calculate your own battery life. So you can take your Game Boy, you run it off the batteries you're using, the games you're playing, you see, oh, I only get 15 hours. Well two and a half times that power consumption, it's gonna bring that down to five hours, give or take. So that that's that's the whole point of that. Um, same thing, I give brightness in measurement of lux, which is uh, largely useless as a value, but the whole point is that uh, it's comparative. Since I measured everything in lux, including a few um, like more common things like a regular AGS 101 or a smartphone or Game Boy Micro or a DS Lite even, you can you can find out a relative brightness based off that. You can look at that and go, oh, well, this one's only measuring 350 lux, whereas the DS was measuring 700 lux. Well, from there, you can calculate that it's approximately half as bright. 
Um, it's the data is there if you want to use it. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, otherwise, I think that's about all I have to say about this kit. It is it's pretty decent. I still think the uh, older 9380 base kits are the way to go if you want like ease of install because if you buy one of the IPS ready shells, they are drop in and there is no soldering required. Um, if you're cramming a 9380 based screen into your OEM shell, there's quite a bit of trimming behind that. But most people I think aren't doing that these days and those that are well, dedicated, <laughs> uh, enthusiasts, we'll call them. Um, but if you want to use your OEM shell, this is certainly not a bad kit to go by. And I like to do these in clear so that you can see what kind of light bleed to expect. And uh, it ain't too bad. There's some, but definitely fine, I think. Anyway. That's all I got. Huge shout out to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me not just this kit, but the previous kit that I messed up. <laughs> uh, they, they sent this kit my way to check out and do a video on. Uh, I will throw a link in the description to their shop if you want to pick up one of these kits from them. Um, I do have an affiliate code. If you enter my name at checkout, which is Mako, M-A-K-H-O, it does get you 10% off. It helps you, it helps me, I figure it's a win-win, so on. Um, use it if you want, or not, I'm not your mom. But anyway, that's all I got, description for links, thanks for watching, catch you all next time.